Hey guys, I don't know how Casey Neistat carries this, like, <sighs> no swearing, no swearing. Okay, so we're gonna go switch the water because I have it on separate lines and I water a separate line every day. Some things, like, these main peach trees and plum trees, they get watered every time the front line gets watered. Everything up here looks really good. This is a cherry tree. Do you, wanna, do you wanna try the first cherries with me? Don't do that to the fence, please. <laughs> this is a crimson. These kind of look, well, is this okay? Yep. They kind of look like a gigantic. Okay, <laughs> so this is one of my lines that I need to switch. So first off, I'm gonna open it to the line that goes to the roundabout and to these fruit trees. Okay, then I'm gonna close it. Then I'm gonna close it to the front. Yeah, right there, you see that clamp? That is a hole. You can see the water coming out there on the side right there. So that is a hole that's about a quarter, maybe half an inch in diameter. And then I take, it's a lot of pressure, huh? And then I take a, a, a hose that's the same size or just the next increment up. I cut it off, I slit it down the middle and I snap it over that hole. And that way it stays pressurized. Pretty, right? So here we go. Geese, poppies, fruit bushes. They're all pretty happy. So I'm going to go get some scything. So if you're curious, my bug shirt is something that I use in the summer when I have work to do and I know there's going to be lots of bugs out. It has netting here. And here, this does zip up and over. I like to wear a baseball cap when I wear it. It's uh, the original Bug Shirt Elite Edition, and I used this when I used to do stream monitoring and electrofishing. It's perfect for this kind of thing because me being out there stirs all the bugs. Well, that's it. I'm going in for my second breakfast. Usually I'll eat one egg before I go out and drink a little bit of tea. But then at about 10 o'clock, after we've got all our chores done, we go in and we have a big breakfast. But can you see the turkey? Can you see her? Um, I have had drip lines in the greenhouse for quite a while now, about a week, and so far it seems to be working really well. The downside of that is that instead of hand watering so that I can fertilize them at the same time, the drip lines are doing all the watering and I'm not necessarily remembering that I need to do uh, fertilizing. I'm clipping all sorts of things lately to reseed them, for instance,
For instance, I have sorrel that's gone to seed and is starting to uh, uh, dry out. You need to wait until the seeds start to fall off on their own before you clip it. But I'm going to go put, put this in a spot where I want sorrel to be wild. And I'll just let the seeds fall off. And since I water in that space anyway, it will, it will go to seed. Um, I have a whole bunch of herbs that I planted into these uh, low, these not lower. I think of them as lower because I have a lot of short things in them right now. But I planted peppers and herbs and um, a lot of teas in here right now. <coughs> Pardon me, there's a lot of pollen on them too. Again, what I'm really worried about is whether or not they're getting fertilized. I have compost tea that I like to use. And um, this is how I start my herbs, is in these little peat pots. And then I pour water into the bottom of the tr planting tray. Okay, so I'm going to show this to you guys. Okay, so I have these little peat pots in here with seeds in them. Okay, and what I do is I set them on top of the soil, and the soil will soak up all this water into the cell. And then the peat pot will just absorb it as it wants to. So you can see that that's hibiscus. Um, I have some peppers. I have other herbs in there. So everything's doing pretty good. We planted turnip greens, and it turns out that our family does not like turnip greens. And I don't know if you can see, but I have all sorts of summer squash right there. Oh my gosh, this big tripod. I love this big tripod. It's so safe, and it drives me a little crazy because I going to move it. Okay, I'm going to show you how I prune. I come in here and I look for anything that's like greens that we wouldn't eat or something that is uh, hogging sunlight. So that's a lot of greens. And we don't like the turnip greens. They're just, they're really bitter or they hurt your tongue. They have little pointers on them. Okay. Ugh, got a little moth on me. This is compost tea. It's full of rabbit manure and nettles and comfrey. That right there is my Rubbermaid that I put my nettles and my comfrey in and my rabbit manure. This is where I grow my uh, nettles. And then I've got comfrey out here everywhere. Okay right there. Can you see him? I've got a grasshopper in my greenhouse. I need to be getting more of my uh, turnip greens out for the bunnies. Bumblebee. All of my summer squash? Lovely, huh? Stop moving, tomato. Right there, tomato, or yeah, summer squash. So that's my tour of the greenhouse this morning. Everything's looking really good. I, I don't have to water it for very long at all. I need to go turn it out, off, in fact. And I need to bring out another bucket of rabbit manure to put in my compost tea. But other than that, we should be good this morning. So I love you guys. And if you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments below. I'm trying to get back into reading and, and answering everybody's comments. And if you're interested in fermentation, my mom just wrote a fermenting book that is on my Etsy store. I'll put the link to it below and also in a card. And it's a great little book, $5 on my Etsy store. And this one is an actual ebook rather than a PDF. And um, so you should be able to read it in an ebook reader. So I love you guys and we'll talk to you later.